Okay, so I guess that we can start slowly now. Um, uh, today's lecture is pretty cool. I mean, it's not too hard, but uh, we're gonna prove two important results. Uh, I mean, prove one and give one example. That's what, how I put it. You know, the first thing is that we're gonna sort of continue proving the so-called the Lipschitz uh, graph theorem. Uh, last time we did almost all of it, uh, but I mean, there was one thing that left over. So so that uh, uh, the, the, the matter set is, is contained in a Lipschitz graph, okay? So it's contained in a, a Lipschitz graph. Uh, M zero. Okay. Sometimes I put zero. Sometimes I don't put it. Uh, anyway. Um, so by doing so, I mean, what we're going to prove today is, you know, based upon what we developed already last time is that we're going to prove that for X and Y in the projected matter uh, measure. Okay. Maybe this is M tilde. Uh, okay. The, the matter may, uh, the matter set is in the Lipschitz graph and take x y to be in the projected matter measures we will show that uh, the gradient du x minus du y is going to going to be less than equals to c times x minus y okay and this this automatically implies that you know we have the Lipschitz graph theorem right because uh, because that's that means that you know m0 tilde is contained in, in a Lipschitz graph, you know, let's say x du x, you know, uh, you know, for those points and you can extend it, right? You know, you can always do Whitney extension or something like that to have a general Lipschitz graph. That's not a big deal. And then the second point is concerning, you know, uh, all of you have already been quite um, concerned that, you know, what kind of examples we have. So this is one of the, only, you know, or very few classes of clear examples I can give you uh, is that we're gonna give an example that where we can, uh, an example in which we know, you know, precisely what is um, M0, the projected matter set, okay? So those are the goals. And you know, once we are done, then we are good to have a good break this weekend again stay seven healthy as usual uh, okay um so um again i just recall quickly here the minimization problem what i'm highlighting on the left panel and then uh and then we define the matter set and the projected matter sets so those are nothing new uh, i mean up to uh, up to now and then last time we already proved two important results the first thing we proved was that was that if you take uh, x to be so I'm I'm highlighting both and then I'm gonna just just recap it uh, quickly in 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 one drawing. So both of the results on the theorem we proved last time was that if you take x v to be in a support of mu, which is a uh, mu is a matter measure. Then you know we use the fact that we can go back and forth in 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 along the along the geodesic or along the uh, calibrated curves. You can go from this is x zero. You can go back to x minus one, and go forward to x x one. You know, and and by by deducing the information between the two, we can essentially you know compare the values if you take any say x plus h, x minus h, you can just bridge the curve, you know, by using the, the user trick. And by bridging the curve, um, you know, like we can, we can deduce uh, nice informations in particular, we can see that, uh, you know, for x, that is that particular x, we can see that the, the symmetric difference or second order sort of symmetric difference is, is bounded by C times A, norm of H square. 
and also that you know by using a sort of like similar idea that we can also control the uh, tile expansion so u minus of x plus h minus u minus of x minus this uh, the the first order expansion it's going to be less than c times norm of a square so those are the two important points that we got last time and it's evidently clear that you see that you know here is evident clear that we can say that u is sort of is uh, is c11 at x right i mean so if you see the the language when we say u c11 at x this is what it meant right because you know you do the expansion around x you see you know uh, you see it's of exactly the form so now from this one i just need to to use those two informations to conclude now is that that's the theorem on the lab panel so for x and y in the projected matter set then we do have du x minus du y less than equals to c times x minus y right um again it it's not something too crazy to to hope for because it's it's clear that I can sort of like mess around with with sort of the the tile expansion here, right? You know, and and combine things together in such a good way that 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 you know after after combining things in in good sort of order, I can I can conclude. Um, uh, so this is the proof I copy in the paper of Evans and Gomez. So 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 this proof is is in the in the paper of and Diego Gomez, um, because uh, be, you know, because uh, probably this is the 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 the, the simplest way. Uh, you know, of course, you, you you can tweak around and you can see that there are various other variants of this, and eventually it all boils down to sort of like uh, you know, you have. You have two points x and y here on on the projected matter set right and you need to compare the ux and the uy right and and a, a clear way is that you mess around with another point z right so you take a point z somewhere on the plan and you're on 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 on, on the space and you mess around with it uh, and you try to you know do all kind of possible comparisons and eventually you choose z to be of specific form so that you get the conclusion so that's that's a natural way and and you know that's what i said i, I copy from evans comments because that's that's sort of exactly um, the way to go so what what we do is that you know we you know you you take z in the torus to be chosen right to be chosen to be determined and and you know it's clear that uh, first of all you can compare anything with with uh, the the I'm sorry you can do expansion at x and y right so so if you do expansion at x and y so I'm highlighting things on the lab panel here uh, when I compare u y with u x I have this 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 inequality right so I'm ex doing expansion at x. Same for z and x, I'm doing expansion from z to x. And finally, I'm doing expansion from z to y. Okay, so I have a bunch of inequalities like that. So three inequalities. And, and why is this interesting? This is interesting because, because it allows me to, you know, use those three inequalities in the triangle inequalities. You know, I have like a minus b, b minus c, c minus i, right? So if I do it correctly, I can, you know, get rid of those those uh, uh, those terms, right? So, or I mean, if, if if I'm doing it slowly, then for example, from the first two inequality, I can combine and deduce that what I can uh, say um, take the um, um, Take the first one uh, plus with minus of the second one, right? So I should have um, uh, 
Okay, so maybe let me rewrite it. Uh, Uy minus Ux minus Dux dot with Y minus X is less than equals to C times Y minus X square. And I'm switching the sign of the second one now so that I can, I can cancel out the Ux. I have Ux minus Uz plus with Dux dot with Z minus X it's less than equals to c times z minus x square, and combining the two by triangle inequality, now I can cancel out the ux. So I would have uy minus uz uh, plus the ux dot with uh, what with z minus y less than equals to c times y minus x square plus z minus x square. Okay. And now the, 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 the last one here, I'm writing it down again. Now I have u of z minus u of y minus d u of y dot with z minus y. It's less than equals to c times z minus y square, right? And now you, again, using exactly triangle inequality once more, we got to the point that we can combine, com, com, sorry, compare now the gradients, right? So I should have d u x, minus duy dot with z minus y less than equals to c times x minus y square plus y minus z square plus z minus x square again this is not not ideal right i mean it's it's not exactly what i want because the right hand side is quite complex however again z is, is of my choice and i can choose it smartly uh, and again, this is this is natural. I mean, um, right? Because if you have the dux equal to dui, then everything is is fine. Uh, we have zero, right? If they are not zero, then you can choose z minus y pointing in exactly the directions of dux minus dui, right? In such case, you maximize the thing inside the absolute value, and you can also get rid of the absolute value. So if not, then you just choose. So you just choose z minus y is exactly, you know, in the directions of the gradient, the difference of the gradient. Okay, so that by doing so, we maximize the the, uh, the what the amount of um, dot product, whatever. Okay, now I have to be just a little bit careful here is that, you know, I want to control the right hand side, there are three squares. And, and if I'm messing up, you know, the sum of the three squares is going to be large. So a natural way to do that would to be choosing it in such a way that they're comparable, right? And how to make them comparable. I want to make something like ux minus dy less than equal to c times x minus y, right? So to make them comparable, I want to make them of the size of x minus y. And that's exactly what I, we are doing. We choose to be exactly of the size of x minus y, okay? And so in the picture, you can see here is that, uh, that um, you know, the distance from x to y is same as the distance from z to y, right? And by triangle inequality, that means that the distance from x to z is also like at, at most twice times it. So it's still of the order x minus y. That that helps us to conclude, right? So then 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 we can conclude now is that we have the left hand side essentially dux minus duy dot with the length of x minus y, and the right hand side all the three terms are comparable to x minus y square. Again, I mean, z minus y is exactly x minus y. Z minus x is at most twice time x minus y. So all together, they are all comparable. So we are done. Okay, so we have we have the lipschitz graph theorem. Um, we have we have you know we can compare the gradient, and or you can also say that in a fancy way that if you do the projection map, uh, pro, pro, you know, projection from the matter set to the projected matter set is Lipschitz and, and so is the inverse. Again, we are saying that it's staying on a Lipschitz graph. This, this 
practice am not doesn't give you the whole Lipschitz graph, but 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 you know it's part of the Lipschitz graph. So so this is essentially this is the Lipschitz graph theorem due to John Mata. Um, yeah, so, um, uh, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It, uh, as I said, the weakness of that is that it might not be a lot. It might be very tiny part of the, of the space. And, uh, you know, uh, okay, one can say that that's good. That's correct in a way that, that um, we have the uniqueness set, which is small. But one can also say that it just occupies a tiny part of the of the space, and hence, if you want to read up a lot of information, then 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 it's it's uh, you know like it's not possible. Okay, let me pause here for for questions before I move on to this example. I have I have something to say about the example. It's simple, but but um, you know. Yeah, I, I, I guess what, what exactly does this statement mean? So, so we, we've got this this map from x and du x to x and it's Lipschitz. So, but wouldn't that just follow because uh, we're just projecting, right? It, I, mean, I, I expect that it's inverse is Lipschitz. Maybe it's not trivial, but yes, yes, yes. So, I mean, the 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 projection is 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 uh, Lipschitz is kind of obvious, but the the inverse, you know. Um, so we are saying it two ways here, and the the, you know, so the inverse uh, it's exactly what we just proved, right? So, um, so when you say the inverse is uh, when you have you map x to x du x, this is not for every point, right? This is only for x in the in the matter set, uh, projected matter set is Lipschitz. So this is clearly not trivial. We just prove it, and and it doesn't give you the whole um, it doesn't give you the whole Lipschitz graph, right? So we are saying that it's it's part of the Lipschitz graph because from here, you know, again we we know that m not is is um, m not is is uh, is compact. So then we can you can do the Whitney extension, whatever Whitney extension to show that uh, to show that m not uh, tilde is part of uh, of a, a a whole Lipschitz graph. Graph say on T n cross I n. Yeah, but 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 you're absolutely right. I mean, one direction is easy, but the other one is is not trivial, and you know, it's it's uh, uh, it's most of the time the best one can hope for for the for the matter set. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So thanks for the question again. I mean, uh, um. You know, when I first saw the Lipschitz graph theorem, I, I I I was also trying to see, you know, if one can improve it, but most of the time it's it's quite hard, and you know, it is what it is. So it's it's really something beautiful. Okay, um, I haven't seen, you know, if one can go further than this, uh, or can deduce more information. Then that's not clear. Yeah, so that's great. Any other concerns or questions? Okay, so now let's go to the example. This is an easy example, but again, it has it, um, although it's easy, it's interesting because it's, um, it contains, um, Okay, I'm I'm falling fatty because I say that I am using the reversible Lagrangian, but but I'll tell you that actually, actually, I mean, uh, a general Lagrangian also works, not just not not just this reversible Lagrangian. Okay, so reversible meaning that you can you know go uh, with v or minus v is giving you the same value, uh, and and a clear example why it is interesting this example is that it contains the classical mechanics uh, Hamiltonian uh, classical mechanics case that if you take uh, one half v square minus uh, 
a potential energy, then 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 it's reversible, right? I'll, I'll tell you like at which part that we really need to use it. So um, maybe I should say some remark. Um, so this example works in a more general setting. You know, without the reversibility, Oh, uh, you know, I'll mention how, but um, anyhow, if it's reversible, then then we can see clearly that you know, for example, in this 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 example, you see that you know, uh, for v varies, right? You see that you know, l x v is always greater than or equals to l x zero. So if you take uh, you if you take uh, minimum in all x v of l x v you would end up with just minimum of x in the torus of Lx here, right? So that that's, you know, so in fact, we are not using reversibility. We are using this property actually, that um, oh, at, at, at the velocity equals to zero, it, you know, when velocity equals to zero, you should think of equilibrium, right? Because if your velocity is zero, you're not moving around. And, and the requirement is that you know, this is an important requirement that, that works for the whole class of example that we have, okay? So we, we need this, not, not the reversibility, okay? So the proposition tells us that, okay, in such a case, then minus of C naught, the um, ergodic constant, whatever, is gonna be minimum of XV. Okay, I think that there's a typo that I met here. It should be Lx zero. Yeah, I think so. And furthermore, not just that, but we have that, uh, uh, yes, the matter set, it's gonna be all points X zero for, for H, X is, is taking the minimum value, okay? Um, so an example. So maybe let me draw the um, let me draw a picture of this. So you take uh, this is x. This is l of x zero. So you fix the velocity to be zero, and you would have your Lagrangian to be you know. So maybe this is zero. This is one. Your Lagrangian is periodic and is maybe you know, from here from the Okay, something like this, assuming that this is periodic. Okay, I might mess up something. Then we are saying that our matter set is going to be the values x at which that the Lagrangian takes the minimum value, right? So in this case, that I have, um, I have mean. of L X zero equals to zero, X in the torus. And let's say that I have the app means to be three points. So in this example, just this picture, the app mean to be three point Z1, Z2, Z3. So add mean of L zero, it's just Z1, Z2, Z3, right? Then in this case, I would have clearly that the, 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 the matter set just to be three pairs, Z1, zero, Z2, zero, Z3, zero. Again, I have V here as a velocity. Uh, that essentially just means that they are, they are, they are equilibrium, equilibrium points, right? Because, uh, because of the fact that, um, uh, you know, like uh, what, uh, that, when velocity is zero, I'm just staying at that point, right? I'm not moving around. So that that that's giving me just equilibrium equilibrium point, and then the projected matter set just gonna be three points. Okay, so that's the example. Again, this is a very simple example, but it turns out to be important because it contains various cases, um, and uh, and it works, you know, 
you just need to put these assumptions here, right? You just need to put the assumption that mean of LXV uh, equals to mean of LX0. That's, that's all. Um, and uh, in practice, it does occur in, in lots of cases. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll mention later. Okay. Um, any question here? Or I can proceed to the proof. The proof is, is um, not too complex. Okay. So let's do the proof and then I'll give you certain comment and you know one 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 point I wanted to say about about also about the um uh the uh uh the generic property of, of matter measures that, that I promised you guys earlier. Um, but let's do it first again. I mean, it's, it's, it's something quite simple. Again, um, the proof is that we first use that they are, they are um, reversible. So I can compare LXV and L, uh, plus LX minus V. So it's greater than or equals to um, LX zero plus theta times V square, because L is even, um, uh, you know, locally uniformly convex, right? But again, the key conclusion that I, I needed was only that if I take mean of LXV, this would equals to uh, mean of LX0 and equals to alpha, some alpha, I just name it, right? And uh, you can see that um, clearly things fits here because I'm in the, in the, minimizing problem, right? So you're taking minimizing uh, the action with respect to measures, which are probability measures and invariant under the Euler-Lagrange flow. And you can see how it go, right? Because when I take minimization of the, of the, uh, of the, sorry, of the Lagrangian acting on the measures, no idea is what, sorry. I think maybe it was, uh, uh, give me one second. Okay, so uh, it's the uh, it's the it's the um, minimizing measures, right? And and it's clear that what I would need to do is that when I have that you know that Lagrangian integrating with respect to uh, probability measures, then the clear thing was to find places in which I have the Lagrangian taking its minimum value, right? And, and that, that's sort of a clear cut here. If you look at the picture above, I would have three points here, right? I would like my, my measures to rest at those points, right? Because then I would have the, 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 the Lagrangian, the action functional taking the minimum value. And lucky for me, in those rest points, the velocity is zero. So I'm not moving around. If the velocity is not zero, then, 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 then it's, it's not good. I'm, I'm still moving around and then that's, that's not acceptable, okay? So uh, how do we do it then? Um, well, I mean, uh, so first of all, we have the first conclusion is that uh, minus C naught is always greater than equals to alpha, which is, which is the minimum of LXV, right? Because I'm, integrating L with respect to a probability measures and L is always greater than equals to alpha. So clearly I have the first conclusion. And then the second point is that I'm just gonna construct, oops. Uh, maybe it's, it's, it's from Walgreen or something. I'm sorry about that, but anyway. Um, so um, the second thing is that uh, I'm gonna just take a point X naught here in which I have LX not zero equals to uh, the minimum value, right? And then I'm, I'm designing my curve and this is my calibrated curve, right? And the calibrated curves now is just gonna be, um, uh, you know, just gonna be uh, the, the, um, the stay put curve, let's say, you know, I'm just gonna let gamma teach just to be always X not for all T and R. And I claim that this is a minimizing extremal curve. Or in other words, I claim that this is my, exactly my calibrated curve, right? 
uh, and once I have this as my calibrated curve, then 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 clearly that um, that that gives me that that x zero zero is going to be um, uh, it, it's going to be in 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 the in the in the um, matter set, okay? Or or I mean by claiming this one here, we're going to imply that the uh, the Dirac delta measures delta of x naught zero is going to be a matter measure. Is a matter measure. Okay, either way, either way. Okay, um, so how do we do this? This is this is very simple. You know, like um, right. You take any curve starting from x zero, ending at x zero. It's just a curve wandering around, right? Because, because again, remember that my curve gamma t is just going to be O x naught for all t in R. Right? Maybe this is a good example in the COVID time, right? Yeah, uh, like normally people are encouraged to move around, wandering around, but but in this time, you know, sometimes staying put, you know, it's it's better for the society, you know. Um, so. So, you know, so what I'm saying is that for this curve, you know, I'm not wandering around at all, I'm staying put and I'm comparing it with the action functional with other curves that is sort of moving around, right? You know, um, with eta a equals to eta b equals to x zero, uh, then how do I compare the action functional? I mean, this is clear, right? You know, for gamma, it's just what I'm staying put with the minimum value clearly it's gonna be smaller than, than, than action functional of, of eta, right? Because whatever eta is, I'm always having that, uh, that, uh, that uh, L of eta s, eta dot of s is always greater than equals to the minimum of xv of L of xv, right? And this is just L of x naught zero, okay? So staying put is better in this case because I'm at equilibrium. Um, therefore, uh, we have obtained that, okay, this is a, a, a good one, right? It's, a, it's just a stay put uh, path and it's clearly invariance under the Lagrangian flow, right? You can just write it down, right? You know, it's, it's satisfying the minimizing problem. So therefore, it's a solution to the Euler-Lagrange equation, and hence its invariance under the the um, Lagrangian flow and the action of of this um, of this uh, matter measure uh, of this measure, this Dirac delta measure is alpha. So therefore, we conclude that uh, that this one again helps us to conclude that delta x naught zero is a matter measure. And not only that, we can also conclude that, um, you know, uh, to have, we can see that alpha is minus C naught. So therefore all possible matter measures or all possible points in, in the matter set should be just the point that minimizing the L, right? So just, just those points. So we are done, okay? So let me give you one remark first, and then and then I'm opening for questions, and I'll give you the second remark, which is also important. So remark one is that uh, so this example, this simple example, uh, uh, works in a lot of scenario, right? You know. Let's let's say that um, I can just consider the case that L X V equals to L V. Uh, for example, no, no. Let, 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 let me say this one first. I just need to consider L X V such that. You know, I kept emphasizing it, but but I just need to have that LXV is greater than equals to LX zero for all V in Rn and all X in the torus, right? 
So if you if you put this assumption, then automatically the example work, right? Uh, and 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 lots of lots of examples fall into this category of the above. So examples of the above include the cases that I have LXV equals to the separable form. So LV. Uh, so Lagrangian is the difference of the action function. So minus W of X and L V is greater than or equal to L zero for all V. Okay. And, and, and this one is actually corresponding to the Hamiltonian H of XP equals to H of P plus W of X. So it, it's quite beautiful that if things are of separable form and um, you know, if the Hamiltonian is somehow helping us to have this condition of the Lagrangian, I can name some right away, but I don't want to bother you. Uh, then, then uh, you know, then we have this condition, and then we have things work out. And so, although that is a very simple case, but 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 it does work, and it gives you a very very clear detail of the of, of the matter sets and matter measures. And in this case, you can say that those are trivial, right? But you know, whatever. Okay. And the third point I want to say is that, um, is that, uh, okay, so um, for, let's say that you, for, uh, for um, all x1, x2, x, uh, k in the, let's say, f mean in this example of L zero right so if you take points in the admin you know that they are in the uh in the projected matter set then then uh then also that you can um do a convex combinations you can say that alpha one delta x one zero plus uh, alpha k delta xk zero is a matter measure. It's also a matter measure for alpha one, alpha two, up to alpha k, greater equals to zero and summation of alpha i equals to one. So if you take a convex combinations of, of, of matter measures, it's, it's also a matter measure. Okay, and this is sort of clear, right? You know, so in a way, you know, to construct matter measures, uh, essentially you just, it's, uh, uh, um, you know, the set of matter measures is a convex set, right? Because you can always take convex combinations of, of measures to have, a, um, to have matter measures. So, uh, so that's what it meant that when we talk about, so, I mean, I should say that the set of, all matter measures is convex. And, and in order to understand this convex set, you typically only need to care about like extreme or exposed points, the points that are sort of like generating the, the convex set. And those, those points are called uh, ergodic matter measures, whatever that meant. So let me pause here for questions or concerns before I address the last remark. Questions, concerns? Is there any relation between ergodic measure uh, and minimizing measures? Uh, ergodic measures. Or so, any special property of minimizing measures? So yeah, so 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 ergodic uh, um, ergodic matter measures is is a matter measure, so it's it's a minimizing one. But for example, in in this example I'm giving you here, if you take like uh, x one up to x k, then I would say that the delta x i zero is ergodic matter measures because it's an extreme point, and then you know, you know, um, so in this case. 
those are the those are the math measures, right? You can take any any convex combinations to create a math measures, uh, to create a math measure. But in this case, that I would say that um, I would say that delta x i zero is is an algorithmic math measure because it's sort of like an exposed point of the convex set. It's or you can think of it as sort of like as the uh, uh, a point in the in the in the basis, right? And you are using those to create all possible other math measures. Okay, so so what, what they say is that this this is a set of uh, it's convex, so so it can be it can be um, it can be uh, uh, met. Uh, this is not a good word, but uh, it, it can be uh, generated by by points. Again, points here I mean measure. Okay, points uh, on the uh, on the uh, uh, by expose or extreme points on the convex hull. And, and, and this, uh, this, uh, these points are called ergodic matter measure. Maybe, maybe let, let me, um, let me, um, let me draw pictures on convex sets and you can see, for example, you know the early example I gave you was this this one, right? If you take three points, let's say those those are the three delta derivative, uh, and then you can create this whole convex hull, right? So this whole thing inside here is going to be all possible matter measures, and you can take this is like delta x one zero, delta x two zero. Delta x three zero. So those are the three sort of like fundamental points or three uh, points that are extreme or exposed points that you know using them you can create all possible matter measure inside. And uh, this, surely this is a, a naive example. There can be more complicated example. Like you can take the shape of the stadium. Yeah, not good drawing. Okay, so if you take the stadium, then um, then this is a convex set, right? And you can question what are the extreme points and what are the exposed points? What are the fundamental points to create this this uh, this convex set? And and uh, in this stadium case, there's those two uh, endpoints here. You are taking two semicircle and joining with with. Uh, you see that those points in here at don't matter, right? They can be created by by the 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 points, you know, generated by the points on the semicircle. So the 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 points on the semicircles are called extreme points, and then. If you ignore the four endpoints, they are called exposed point, or vice versa. I'm, I'm now my mind is blank. Um, uh, someone tell me which one is 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 uh, bigger set, exposed point or extreme point? Okay, whatever, one or the other. <laughs> okay, but but what what I meant is that those are those points are sort of extreme points. Right, so you 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 take those points and you can just just using convex combination you can generate the whole stadium and that's that's the thing. Okay, now let uh, does it answer your question? Uh, I I is but my question was uh, I in the book case. Uh, the data measures uh, minimize the problem, and, and those were the ergodic matter measures. And my question was, if this is a coincidence or just 
Is there a general principle that they are coincide? coincide? Oh, okay. So, so yes. Yeah. So this is a, a very, it's just a very simple example in which yes. we are so lucky to be able to describe them. In general, if Lx0 is not minimizing things and you see that, uh, you know, in general, if, if, if minimum of the Lagrangian is some LXV for V uh, is not zero, right? Then then you couldn't do this because, because if you let the minimizing measure to be there, then when V is not zero, then it's force your curve to start moving, right? It cannot stay at equilibrium. So that meant that the general case for matter measure is very complicated. And, and, and up to now, um, it's quite hard to describe them. So we have very abstract way to describe them, but in principle, the measures can create very complicated parts, right? So uh, yes, so so uh, so exactly. So extreme points, are, are including the endpoints, and uh, and exposed points don't include the endpoints. So thank you. So extreme points are the whole two semicircles with endpoints. And the exposed points are the one that you uh, expose points. Uh, just two semicircle with the endpoints. Thank you. So, um, so what I meant is that this is a very, very simple example. So in general, so remark two. Uh, just to follow the line that you asked that if you, if say that L X not V not is the mean of O X V of L X V, right? With V not not zero, then, 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 then clearly Delta X not V not is not a matter measure. Okay, you should check me on this, but basically when you have V naught is not zero, right? It start forcing your curve to move, right? So, I mean, if you stay put gamma T equals to X naught for OT, this, this is just not gonna work, right? Because because this doesn't satisfy the fact that gamma dot is, is V naught, right? So you cannot stay put and, and it forces you to, to go in certain parts and, and, and essentially ergodic measures, whatever you ask, it's, it's, it's sort of a way that you try to wandering around the pathways in such a way that you are able to, um, to minimizing the, the, the action functional. Okay, so that's sort of how I put it. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Yeah, cool. So, so let, let me come to the last question also, uh, last point also related to, to your question is that Remark three. So I said earlier that there was a, a, a result by Mane and also it's up to date. There's still a conjecture in general is that is that generically, generically um, L only has a, a unique matter measure. Okay, so this seems absurd, right? <laughs> It, it's just absurd uh, based upon what we just discussed earlier, right? So uh, what, what do we mean by generically in this setting? I mean, in those examples I gave you, it can be, you know, if you have many points, then it can, you know, it's already not a unique matter measure, right? You can have a convex hole of K dimensional or K minus one, whatever, right? So what do we mean here? So what we meant is that, okay, so in our example, so this is a result by Mane. So it's a big result. Mane. Okay. Uh, uh, so in our example, right? If you have L X V, it's always greater than or equals to L X zero. Then, then, then all possible matter measures. Oh, then we have already said that M zero is just the set of act mean, the projected matter set, act mean of L zero, right? In this case. And and uh, it might have, it might contain many points. 
So in 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 uh, differential topology or, or in in dynamical system here, what they meant by generically is the following, and the problem is that sometimes so this is great for them. I mean for for dynamics and for differential topology, but for a PD person, it's it's just a different framework. So generic CD is what for them is that generosity is that you take LXV and you try to perturb it with, with a potential energy. So make it phi of X for phi is smooth and essentially is staying in a dense, dense, then residual set, residual set. I mean, uh, so what I meant is that phi is in a set, uh, let's say D, which is the intersection of K in N of OK, where I have OK is open and dense in the in, in the space of continue, uh, C infinity functions. And you take uh, D to be the intersection um, countable intersection of those sets. So this called a dense residual set. And, and generically in, in, the, in the differential topology setting for them is that if you add such a potential phi, then L plus phi has a, a unique matter measure for all phi in D in this sort of dense residual set, okay? And clearly you see how we can do this. Uh, it's very simple. So look at L of X zero, right? So it can have, um, it can have many, many minimum points or even a line segment like this down here, many minimum point. So L X zero. How do you, how, how do you do this? You just add a fee. You just put up all possible minimum points so that um, when you add phi, then, uh, then um, so you choose phi so that the admin set of L X zero plus phi, it just uh, has only one point. And that's it. <laughs> so that's, that's what it meant, right? You, you just do certain little perturbations. So you have many minimum points down here, right? This point, this whole line segment, this point, this point. In this case, the actual case you have infinitely many, or I mean, matter measures, but if you do a little perturbations free in such a way that you get rid of all other minimum point, you just keep one, then you have uh, generically, it has a unique matter measures. So it is great in, in, in differential topology and dynamical system setting, but for PDE, sometimes it's not very helpful because you know, then you have to do perturbations and you get rid of the original structure of your equation. So, you know, either way, uh, I, yeah, I just want to convince you that. Is it clear? I mean, is it, um, and as I said, up to date, uh, the, wait, certainly my, uh, my camera disappear. Okay, whatever. Uh, uh, there's some problem, but. Any question on this or are we all fine with this thing? Um, uh, so one last question. So last last year you were asking about the um, qualitative rate of the weak conversion. So in this single case, when we know that is, um, then that would be easy, right? Uh, I don't know. I haven't checked the literature. I'm sure that, um, that, uh, uh, okay, so if you have the admin set only has one point. Okay, so let, let me put it this way. It would be a fun example for some of you trying to compute what's the rate. Okay, uh, I, I'm not sure if it has been done in the literature, but, but, but yeah, so why don't you try it? For those of you who are interested in. And for the case that you have like, you know, finitely many agonic matter measures, even in this case, can you also compute the rate? It's also interesting. Okay, 
and and this is i mean i'm i'm happy to be able to uh, explain to you what the generic city in in dynamic system and up to date there's still a big conjecture that they say that generically not only you have a unique matter measures but also that you have uh, a unique matter measure which is only a delta dirac or dirac delta or a, a a periodic orbit so in this case clearly it's a dirac delta right in the other case like like you asked earlier it, it v naught is not zero clearly you cannot hope for a, a a dirac delta you would need to have some orbit going around and the conjecture is that in such a case you have a a unique periodic orbit for the matter measure so you know if one can do this this is a big deal <laughs> i'm sure you know you can publish it in any fancy journal as you wish okay yeah, so keep thinking, who knows, right? Again, you guys are fresh, uh, open-minded, naive, and naive is good. You know, I'm, I love to be naive, being naive when I'm doing research. So don't be scared. <laughs> okay, uh, so suddenly my camera disappeared. I couldn't see it, whatever. So anyway, I uh, have a, I'm sorry about the technical glitches. Uh, have a great uh, little break and I'll see you again on Monday. I'll try to post the lecture notes in a timely manner. Thank you all. Bye for now. Okay, now I can see it. Thank you.